Welcome to the first episode of Upgrade My PC, please, a collaboration between Harbour Unboxed and TechSpot.com to bring you, our readers and viewers, the opportunity to upgrade your PC for free. If you missed the video last week explaining what the series is all about and how you can enter, be sure to check that out first. I'll include a link in the video description below. In short, this series will give viewers the chance to have their PC upgraded for free. Each episode will feature five PCs in need of an upgrade. I'll take a look at the owner's current setup, discuss the upgrade options, and let you guys decide which PC deserves to be upgraded. Whoever gets the most votes will win the upgrade package tailored to their PC, and the winner will be announced on the following episode. Then we'll take a look at five more PCs in need of an upgrade and do it all over again. For the upgrades, we have allocated a budget of $500 US per episode for this first season of Upgrade My PC, Please. The idea is to help PC enthusiasts who are struggling to keep their system up to date, and hopefully we can do that in an entertaining and educational fashion. For this first episode, we do have the first five computers that are in need of various upgrades, so let's go check them out. First up, we have a PC that started life back in 2011 as a pre-built from retailer Harvey Norman. Over the years, owner Mason has executed a number of upgrades to keep the old boy alive, but in order to get much further, he's now faced with a major platform upgrade. Mason did recently purchase a second-hand 2500K, but got a little shafted on that purchase when he realized how difficult it was to not only come by a micro ATX motherboard, but find one that is available at a reasonable price, and he does need a new motherboard to support overclocking. The hope is to achieve more consistent frame rates in games such as Battlefield 1, PUBG, and CSGO. Apparently stuttering is a real issue with the older quad core, and I'm sure that lower clock DDR3 memory just isn't helping either. Mason did recently purchase a GTX 1060 3GB graphics card, so we're pretty good on that front. This then is, as suspected, a platform overhaul. As a fellow Aussie, Mason has about $600 to play with, so I propose the following. For the CPU, let's not mess around and go straight in for the kill with the Ryzen 5 1600 and slap that on the ASRock AB350M Pro 4, which will fit snug inside that little Antec case. We can really only afford 8GB of DDR4 on this budget, but since we went with a B350 board offering 4 DIMM slots, it will be possible to expand the memory capacity down the track. Then finally, since we have a little extra left over, I thought why not throw in a Cryorig M9A, which will keep the R5 1600 cool even at 4GHz. This upgrade will ensure that choppy frame rates are a thing of the past for Mason, and he'll have no excuse for missing those headshots in future. Next up, we have a black and red themed build from Brett, and he's based over in New Zealand. This was his very first PC build, and he created it only earlier this year after collecting parts for what he says was the better part of a year. Brett always intended on upgrading the CPU at a later date, and had only planned to use the Pentium G4560 as a placeholder. It's certainly struggling to get the most out of that GTX 980 Ti in titles such as PUBG and Total War Warhammer, two titles Brett often plays. In fact, the CPU really is the only letdown here, but thankfully it is strapped onto the very capable Gigabyte Z270 Gaming 3 motherboard, so we can swap the G4560 for a Core i5-7600K, and that will offer a massive boost in performance. Brett has also complained the system does run quite loud, so we thought we might as well ditch that air cooler and go with an all-in-one liquid cooler instead, something like the Deep Cooler GameStorm Captain 120EX, that'll fit the bill nicely. With the 7600K installed and the all-in-one liquid cooler in place, the 7600K should be good for a decent overclock on the Gigabyte Z270 motherboard, and that will certainly help for smooth frame rates in PUBG and Warhammer. Next up, we have a Xeon-powered gaming room from Hamwar, who's based in the UK. Not sure if that's your real name, but if it is, that's a cool name. Uh, this system has taken a lot of time to put together, and many miles were travelled hunting for used parts on eBay and Gumtree, we're told. The Linfield-based Xeon CPU was released back in 2009, and it's getting very long in the tooth now. So we are again looking at a full platform overhaul here, and the aim is to achieve smooth frame rates in titles such as Battlefield 1, H1Z1, and Forza Horizon 3. That being the case, the most cost-effective choice right now is, of course, the Ryzen 5 1600, which I propose we stick on the MSI B350 Gaming Plus with 8GB of DDR4 memory. Again, increased DDR4 pricing has limited us to an 8GB capacity, but with four DIMM slots available, there will be room to expand in the future. Converting our $500 US budget into British monies, I believe that's the term, 
weight, no pounds. Uh, that gives us 390 pounds. That's pretty much all eaten up though by the hardware proposed, so unfortunately we can't squeeze an upgraded cooler or anything else into the package. Crikey, we're back in Australia, this time with Hayden and his CAD box. Uh, I promise I'll never do that again for the remainder of this video. Right, okay, down to business. So Hayden built this rig with his stepfather almost four years ago now with the intention of using it for CAD assignments as he is a student. Of course, like most of us, he does enjoy the odd gaming session from time to time and he mostly plays uh, Europa 4, Factorio and Civilization 6. The problem is the Core i5-4670 is getting hammered with the CAD work. It takes hours to complete short three minute renders, so we definitely need some more CPU firepower. Ideally, I'd love to suggest something like the Ryzen 7 1700, but that's just not going to fit within our budget, unfortunately. And the idea of something like a Threadripper build would no doubt have Hayden throffing at the mouth, but again, not realistic for our budget. Anyway, getting back to reality, once again, I am going to recommend the Ryzen 5 1600 with its six cores and 12 threads. It will be ideal for the CAD work. Strap that on the B350 motherboard with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory and we're set. Once memory prices do settle down, Hayden might want to add another eight gigabytes and then the system would be unstoppable for his CAD work. Hayden says he's also keen to give overclocking a shot, so I suggest throwing in the Cryorig M9A. Last but certainly not least, we have Dakota Silver Shadow built inside a retro looking Cooler Master Praetorian 732, an all aluminium case. Dakota built this rig late last year and deliberately chose this case for its all aluminium design and early 2000s appeal. So the case is staying. The computer is used for gaming and music production, and with the FX 6300 at the helm, it's none too good at either task. The Ryzen 5 6300, which we've used a few times already, is probably going to be overkill, uh, especially for the games that Dakota likes to play, uh, the most CPU demanding of which is Overwatch, and that plays perfectly fine on a 4-core 8-thread Ryzen 5 1400. So we're going to save some money on the CPU and invest that in a nice big SSD from Crucial. Since Dakota loves that aluminium case so much, I thought it would be very cool to get the MSI B350 Tomahawk Arctic motherboard in there, and that's why I went for the white silver board. This also offers room to expand the memory and storage further down the track. Overall, a very cool upgrade for this rig. We might have run a few dollars over the budget on this one, but I think it was worth it to secure the Tomahawk Arctic motherboard. Alright guys, there's five PCs all in need of a good old fashioned overhaul. Your job is to let us know which one you think is most deserving of receiving our proposed upgrade package. To cast your vote, please follow the link in the video description, that'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. By signing up for the forums, commenting and voting, you'll also go in the running to win a cool prize at the end of the season, and of course you'll be eligible for any other competitions we run in the forums as well. Additionally, you'll also be able to find pictures and more information about the systems featured on Upgrade My PC, please. Submit your own system and engage with the community. Remember, when making your submission, photo quality is of the utmost importance, so take your time and get us some nice shots. Even take the box outside and take advantage of natural light for much better photos. Finally, voting will be open till Saturday night and then we'll announce the winner at the start of next week's episode, at which point we'll have another five PCs to check out and we'll do it all again. I'm your host, Steve. Go get voting!